What's the other thing, U.S. political return, the implementation of mass formation psychosis? Mass formation psychosis is when a large part of society focuses its attention to a series of events and their attention focuses on one small point or one small issue. And they get hypnotized regardless of the data proving otherwise, and they take massive irrational response and action to solve the problem. This could be COVID. This could be um, climate change, where people are saying we need to go all green, even if it means that our standard of living goes back to near 19th century conditions. We're seeing this discussion happen worldwide. Right now, I'm all for green, by the way, but I listen to Elon Musk says we don't have the infrastructure yet. We need an infrastructure upgrade first, and which goes beyond the scope of going into the detail of what we're talking about here. But we're not ready to go green to the level they want. They are pushing it now. So we're seeing that we're seeing where anyone who questions the narrative, the establishment narrative or the leader's narrative is attacked and disregarded or punished, right, or demonetized, deplatformed, et cetera. There's all different ways this can play itself out. The other thing is the rise of the deep state. We've been talking about this because Pluto has to do with secretive and subversive elements of society, revolutionary groups, organized crime, and the like. So Pluto transits, Pluto return, Barbara Planetary Cycle Index Trough brings these elements into our lives. So this is to do with the fact where the oligarchy wields unseen power and influence over the larger population hidden in plain sight. So they, they're, they're, they're wielding this unseen power and influence. They are hidden, but in plain sight simultaneously. So, uh, so you know, we're, we're looking at the fact that the military industrial intelligence complex, the captains of industry and transnational corporations, right, to the labor unions down to organized crime or working in concert with each other, right, to basically do a massive power grab. But it's not just a massive power grab of money, resources. It also has to do with rights, taking away our rights, taking away our privileges, taking away everything, right, where we can be deplatformed, demonetized, right, at an instance, just like the great Trudeau of Canada pulled off in front of everybody has not been punished at all for it. In fact, the Canadians, even though he's 28% approval rating, he's likely to get reelected regardless. So that's the other thing. The other thing too is like inverted totalitarian managed democracy, crony capitalism, kleptocracy, modern monetary theory, applied perception management. So we definitely have plutocracy happening, inverted totalitarianism where a system a people of great power and corporations have corrupted, subverted, subverted democracy and where economics, best politics, where political expediency, best politics, managed democracy, right? The leader, the future leader of managed democracy, Kamala Harris. That's right, Kamala Harris. I'm just saying it as I see it. And you'll see why when I say that, when I show, we talk about Joe Biden. Right. Biden is the is the way Harris, someone like Harris, comes to power, someone who can never get elected. Right. So she gets selected. And so um, we see that class struggle, modern welfare, capitalism. Right. We're going to see all of that universal basic income. All of that is the Kamala solution. So. America's Pluto return nightmare, a war on two fronts. We've been talking about this. The biggest existential crisis, internal and external, would be where China has made official announcements that they're ready to invade, and that they told the U.S. just recently. It was just I just posted this uh, on Twitter, on Facebook, uh, at other social media within the group that China basically told the U.S. they are planning to strike Taiwan, and told the U.S. to get out of the way. Now I thought they wouldn't do it, but now they announced they are making plans. So. We'll talk about that because I believe that will happen September, October. That's the only window in which they could pull it off. So that's another scenario. And then looking at here, we start off the fourth turning crisis with Pluto. We finish it. It comes to a completion or a peak, the third act peak, right? You always have to have a dramatic third act like, you know, in a Mario Puzo 
our uh, book or like in the Godfather, if you look, if you've seen all three Godfathers, the third act is always this, you know, unexpected development of twist and things you didn't see coming, right? Very dramatic, very bloody, very, you know, very much a uh, tragic, a type of tra- a romantic slash tragic Italian opera ending. Well, that's certainly when you have Uranus, when you start off with Neptune and finish with Uranus or with Pluto and then finish with Uranus. And that will be the type of scenario we see play out by 2027. So we see all of this, right? ET disclosure, of course, is going to play a role in this. We're going to talk a lot about that in July. I've been sort of putting that off for a while because there's a lot more to say on that. And I want to give it two presentations on that. So the third Uranus return. Now, I'm not saying we're going to absolutely have World War III, but I do think we're going to have a close moment if we don't. But it doesn't matter. Geopolitically, things are going to change. Geoeconomically, everything is going to change. Technologic, techno- uh, we're going to go through. Look, and the same thing I should put in here, besides ET disclosure, is we're going to have technological singularity, not by 2029, by 2027 where machine intelligence will equal human intelligence. And this will be something the government, the the first people are going to be using this is going to be the military. You know that. They're going to have artificially intelligent jets, tanks, machines, aircraft. They're going to integrate all the artificial intelligence of the aircraft carrier. They're going to start developing, you know, humanoid type of robots. They may not look like, they may not function as a Terminator, right? but they're the first generation. So we're going to start seeing that all come out and that will play a role, a big role. If we do have a war, it's going to be the artificial intelligence that's going to drive the narrative of that war. All right, next, uh, US Pluto return. Now we're moving, we just had the first one. We're moving to the second one, July 11, 2022. And from 2022 to 2027, we are in the black swan twilight zone. Black Swan is when you have large uh, planetary alignments that are converging with disturbing geopolitical, geoeconomic headwinds. We see that lead to a triggering of a series of cascading events that culminate and trigger a larger Black Swan event. So Black Swans are improbable, unforeseeable, highly impactful events. They can you know, naturally, they could be earthquakes, they could be a natural disaster, they could be a collapse of a large building, bridges, unexpected arrest of high level officials, coup d'etats, military defeats, unexpected military defeats, uh, like what we saw in World War Two, in the beginning of World War Two, where we saw the British and German army collapse right in front of everybody's eyes. And Germany overtook Europe, overtook Africa, overtook Eastern Europe, overtook, you know, the Middle East very quickly nobody saw that coming and it happened and when it happened it happened fast so these are the type of things financial collapses are black swan events the collapse of the soviet union was a black swan event 2008 was a black swan event so we are in we're like we're going to have much bigger dramatic black swan events happening and you know what they'll say Who could have saw it coming? Nobody could have saw this coming. That's what they're going to say. You know what that's what they're going to say. It's not just the politicians will say that. They're going to be people in the astrology field that are going to say that, right? So we could have an emergence of black swan events in one region of the globe, which will have an almost overnight effect on another region of the globe. So that's another fact that we need to keep in mind. All right. Now, What's, why, is, why is this all important? How does this relate to you? Well, I'll tell you. The black swan is the punch. They don't want you to see it coming. The black swan is the punch they don't want you to see coming. So uh, when boxes get knocked out by a punch, it's usually from the one they didn't see coming. So it's the surprise factor, Right. The surprise factor in force on force doesn't explain why a punch that a guy doesn't see coming is often twice as effective as a punch he is mentally prepared for. And this has to do with the subconscious mind. So when you see a punch coming, your brain can, in the fraction of a second, you can allocate a number of resources 
all right, with subtle postural adjustments, for instance, so that the force is absorbed by your body better. When we can't see that punch coming, it's more damaging because we're not in a position to receive it as well. So it's the punch you don't see coming that knocks you out. And this phrase has been used as a business and investment aphorism as well. So the black swan, Pluto, all of that is the punch you do not see coming. They don't see coming, or if they're aware of it, right? They don't want you to see it coming, right? And here, it's the sneaky punches, the ones that you don't see coming that do the most damage. So this is what I'm referring to when I'm talking about all of this big stuff happening in the sky, looking at it from, you know, the 100,000 foot vantage point versus the 10,000 versus the 100 foot vantage point. We have to look at it from all the different vantage points and keep in mind that we are now in the black swan twilight zone period. So just because you may not want to hear this doesn't mean this is going to go away. It doesn't mean this is not going to affect you at some point. Like what's happening in the market. So, well, you know, I'm down a bit, but it's not affecting the way I spend my money. In fact, I'll just use more of my credit card, right? That's all going to hit us when we least expect it. And that's what we need to be prepared for. To watch the full presentation and more like this on geopolitics, the economy, and world events from an archetypal and mundane astrological perspective, join the Global Transformation Astrology Membership. Go to gta.williamstickevers.com. Become a GTA member today.